In this video, I'm going to show you how to search an API with React. So what are we building? We're going to search the Interpol database of red notices, and we're going to debounce the search. So what will you learn? You'll learn how to search APIs with React. You'll learn how to debounce input. You'll learn a little bit about TypeScript, and you'll learn a little bit about React. So there's this API here from Interpol, and you can see we have this slash notices slash v1 slash red. And this here takes a for name, which is a string. We can click try it out here in their Swagger docs, and it's pre-filled it with some examples here. And then we can execute this query. And we can see the endpoint that it's hit, and we can see the response here. So what we're going to do is provide a search box, and we're going to allow the user to search by the for name. You can search by these other parameters if you like, but that is just going to build on top of what we build in this tutorial. If you follow along with what we build, you're going to be able to also build this full search. So I have a Next.js application already bootstrapped here, and I'm using TypeScript. You can follow along with any React application you like, even if you're just using JavaScript. So the first thing I want to do is to set up some use state hooks. So I'm gonna say const because use state and I'm just gonna copy this down three times. And the first one is going to be our notices. And then I'm gonna say set notices. And this is where we're going to store all of our notices that we get back from the API. The next one is going to be our search. And search is going to hold our search string. In the docs here, their example was Daniela. And then our last property is just going to be loading. And this just means that we're searching the API and we're waiting for our request to come back. So let's provide an input here. And I'm going to give my input a type of search. I'm going to give this a placeholder of search. And I'm going to provide an on change handler here. I'm going to say on change equals, and I'm going to give it another function. I'm going to take the event here. And then I'm going to call set search and I'm going to pass in my event dot target dot value. This function here, if you want to avoid that, you can say function handle set search, and then we can pass in the event into here. And then we could put our set search into this function here, and then we could just pass handle set search into the on change handler. But I want to just call handle set search down here. So I'm gonna leave it as this. TypeScript is complaining here because argument type string is not assignable to parameter type set state action undefined. And the reason for this is because search here is undefined because we don't have a value in the search box. So we can find a value of null, but we're still gonna have an error and so we can say that search is going to be a string or it's going to be null. So what happens when this search parameter changes? We want to search the API. So we can do that with a use effect hook. So I can say use effect. And inside of the dependency array for this use effect hook, I'm going to put search. So this is going to say when search changes, call this use effect hook. So we want to say search the API and we want to do this with an async function. So we could say that the use effect hook is an async function. However, a better way of doing this is to create a new function inside of this use effect hook. So I'm going to say async function fetch data. Then when we're fetching, I'm going to say set loading to true. And I'm going to use the fetch API here. So I'm going to say const data is equal to await fetch. And I have the endpoint here. And the thing that we want to change is this search parameter here. So I'm going to put search into here. And then because we're using the fetch API, we have to call dot then. And we're going to get the response and we're going to return the response JSON. 
Now that we have our data property here, we want to say set notices. And if we come over to the API and we have a look at the response, you can see that we have some data about the response here, like what the query was and how many results were returned. Then we have this embedded, and then we have an array of notices. What we care about is just this array of notices here. So I'm going to say data dot underscore embedded dot notices. So we have one little error here, and this is the same error as we had before. Loading is a Boolean, but at the moment its type is undefined. So I'm just going to say that loading defaults to false. And that's going to tell TypeScript that loading is a Boolean. So the next thing we want to do is to just call this fetch data function. And once we get the notices, we just want to set loading to false. So let's get our notices here. And I'm going to come down below the input and I'm just going to say json.stringify. I'm going to print these to the DOM so I can see what they look like. And then I'm going to start the application with yarn dev so we can see what it looks like in the browser. So we have this search box here and we have an empty array which aligns with our notices here, which is going to be an empty array. In fact, we can initialize it there as an empty array. And I'm going to search for Tom. And you can see we get back a ton of data here. So now that I have all this data here, I'm just going to copy it all. And I'm going to come over to a new tab here, and this is app.quicktype.io. And I'm going to paste in my data here. In fact, I should just copy a segment of it because it's too long. So I'm going to say stringify notices, and I'm just going to stringify the first one. So I'm going to copy this data here. I'm going to paste this into QuickType. And you can see that I get this notice data here. So I'm going to copy this here and I'm going to come up to the top. I'm going to paste in my new interface and then my notices here, I'm going to say this is an array of my new notices interface. So now we're going to get some typing on our data. Let's map through our notices and print them to the screen. So I'm going to say notices.map and then this is going to be notice and I'm just going to return a div and my div is going to have a key of notice dot entity ID and I'm also going to add a class name here and this is going to be styles dot notice. So now I'm just going to check if the notice has a thumbnail and if it does then I'm going to print the image to the DOM. So I'm going to say notice dot links dot thumbnail dot href and end and then I'm going to say image, and this is going to come from next. So I already have image imported up the top here. And the source is going to be notice.links.thumbnail.href. The width I'm just going to say is 100 pixels. The height is just going to be 100 pixels as well. And the alt is going to be notice.name. Okay, so I get this error here, and this is telling me that Next doesn't know that I want to allow images from this source here. And the source is ws public interpol.int. So I'm going to come down to my Next config. And I'm going to say images. And then I'm going to allow images from an array of domains. And then I'm just going to put this domain inside of that array. And now I'm going to restart my server. Refresh the page here. 
and I'm going to search for Tom again and you can see that we get an array of images. This is saying cannot read property undefined of href. So undefined of href. So I think this is because we need a question mark here. And yeah, so this is because not all of the notices have an image that go along with them. So this dude here, he definitely belongs on this list. He looks like a bad dude. Let's print out their name and date of birth. I'm going to say div class name is equal to styles dot notice body. Uh, so let's add a p tag here and I'm going to say notice dot forename. And then I'm going to do notice dot name. You can see here we have a name and let's also just print out a date of birth. So I'm going to do another p tag and this is going to be notice dot date of birth. Okay, great. So we have some names here and if we have a look at our network requests, so every time I search, it's going to make a new network request for every single character. So you can see here the forename is T and the next one will be TO and then M where we just want to search when the user stops typing for half a second. So in theory, I should only search for this Tom once. And we should be able to reduce these three network requests here down to a single network request. So we're going to use a debounce hook to do that. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this hooks. And inside of hooks, I'm going to create a new hook. I'm going to call this use debounce.tsx. So I'm going to import from React. And I'm going to import use effect and use state. Then say function use debounce. And then I'm going to export default use debounce. So how this is going to work is we're going to update a variable when the user has stopped typing for a given amount of seconds or a delay. So I'm going to say value and this value can be anything. So I'm just going to type this as any, and I'm going to say the delay is a number. Then you say const and I'm going to use state and I'm going to default this to our value. And then this is going to be debounced value. And I'm going to say set debounced value. Next, we're going to use a use effect hook. So I'm going to say use effect. And our use effect hook is going to have two values in the dependency array, and they are going to be value and delay. So I want to say const handler is equal to set timeout. And I want to set this timeout to our delay. And in the body, I want to set debounce value to our value. And then the next thing to do is to return a function that's just going to say clear timeout. And the timeout that we want to clear is our handler here. So what this is going to do is clear the timeout or cancel it if our value changes. And then when we get to the end of the delay and if the value hasn't changed, then we're going to set the value. So at the bottom here, let's just return our debounced value. Let's come back. And I'm going to say const debounced search is equal to use debounce and I want to debounce our search property here and I'm just going to debounce this by 500 milliseconds. So if I did a thousand here then that would be a full second but I think 500 milliseconds is pretty reasonable. So the next thing we need to do is to update our use effect hook 
to use the debounce search instead of our actual search parameter here. So I'm just going to replace search here. Then I'm going to put our search property in here. And then I only want to call fetch data if we have a value in our debounce search. So I'm just going to say if debounce search, and then I'm going to save. And then this is going to say if the debounce search is defined, then call fetch data. Let's try this again. I'm going to come to the search box here. I'm going to start Tom. And we only get one request here. And if we have a look at the request headers, you can see that the full name is Tom. That's the full value. And that is because we've debounced the search. We have this loading property here that we're setting to true when we start the fetch. And then we're setting it to false when the fetch is finished. So let's just go ahead and use this property. So under the input, I'm just going to say, if the loading is true, then we're just going to print a P tag. And we're just going to say loading. You could put a spinner in here or something if you like. So I'm going to search again for T. And you can see that we get a loading property there. If you wanted to, you could set the notices back to an empty array when we start. So you can see that we saw the loading and the array of data simultaneously. If you didn't want that effect, you could set notices to an empty array. And then we're going to set it back down to our results here. So now I could search for T. And you can see the results array disappear and the loading message appears. So if you want to get the code for this application, including the debounced function, which I use all the time, you can find a link to the repository in the description below. If you like this video, please make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.